when we arrived to Necocli, this, you know, this last city of Colombia next to the Gulf, we just were shocked as what it is as a human business already. Really, we were in shock. Ben and I, we were in shock. We were seeing these kind of supermarkets that it were on these little shopping carts where they were selling boots, they were selling camping tarps, they were selling utensils for the dairy and gap. Like it was a normal day to go on a camp, like to go on a, to go to the park. It was so crazy. And as we were interviewing the sellers, the owners of these little, you know, mom and pop businesses, they were telling us it's because of the migrants that we have now a living, that we have now a business. So legitimately, you are understanding that the open border agenda from the Biden administration has created jobs <laughs> in Central and South America and that ultimately this has been a business now. It is a big business. The craziest thing about it is that when you land on the boat side, it is just the travel agencies, which they are expanding this migration to different points of entry and different, uh, you know, villages. It is also a business. So you have all these businesses that all these travel agencies by boats that there are traveling the migrants to different entrances like a Purgana, like a Candy, like all these places like uh you know uh armila that these are the places where they're directing the boats to travel the 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 migrants that they land on ecocli and from there they pay an amount of price so they can send them over there and as we landed in capurgana it was just crazy to see the amount of migrants that they were coming in on a daily day basis from all these entities in particular the one that shocked me the most it was china i cannot believe that we were watching how many Chinese people were arriving? It was just mind blowing for me that, you know, it started. I remember when the caravan started, it was Central America, then South America, then the whole world. But now in particular, it's just, it's like strategically people are coming from different parts of the world. And now it's China that is coming along the way. And as we were going up, on the first day to Capurgana, we entered Capurgana, we were walking through Capurgana, and we got on these little taxi cabs that they took us into, you know, the place where it was a shelter, uh, where they prepped the migrants before they go up the Darien. And it is a whole ritual, you know, the leader of the shelter puts all the people together and they do a prayer because it is it is so dangerous to go up this route in Capurgana. And as we were going up, as we were walking, they were explaining to us that, you know, several types of people, you cannot record the, the guys that they have a blue vest. You cannot record them from the front, only from the back. Those are the guides that they are, you know, taking the migrants. Also, you cannot record uh, the guys that they are and the orange vest that they are, the ones that they're carrying backpacks. So we were like, okay, so let's just record the journey. And as we were going up, I, I, some, one of the guides that is an orange vest that they charge money. These people that they were in the orange vest, they charge money. They charge money in terms to, uh, if the migrant gets tired, they were charged on a certain amount of money between 30 to $60 to carry their baggage or to carry their luggage or to carry their child. So as we were getting up there, there was a particular guide and an orange vest that it was staring at me consistently. And he said, you're not from here. And I said, no, I'm not. And he said, you're from Mexico, huh? And I said, yeah, I'm from Mexico. So he said, oh, I've been to Mexico a couple of times. So I said, hey, I sat down with him. And the most shocking interview that it happened on the dairy, and it was this one. We interviewed a coyote. And he, and he, and he identified himself. He said, I used to work as a coyote. For me, it was shocking because I, he said, I used to work as a coyote in Mexico. So I'm like, what the hell are you doing all the way over here? And I, and I asked, where are you from? And he said, I'm from Colombia, but I also have citizenship of Panama. So I said, what were you doing in Mexico? He said, I was working as a coyote. I was, I, I was a coyote. I was, I was moving people through what state? He said, through Chihuahua. I said, wow. And how was the strategy? I used to pick them up in Querétaro, this city in Querétaro. And from there, I used to move them all the way up into, you know, into the north. And I said, wow, I wasn't shocked. 
I said, so what happened? So what was the whole deal? Oh, I used to charge uh, $2,500 to cross them. I said, like, wow, that's a huge amount of money. And after that, I asked him, so what happened? I used to, I had to leave. They were, they were kidnapping. They were killing us. They were assassinating us. And I had to leave. Turns to violence started getting real, real bad. I was in shock that I got that. And he gave me two minutes. And I asked him for two minutes. And he said, I will give you two minutes. In these two minutes, I will tell you exactly what is going on. And this is what we got. Aquí estamos con uno de los guías que prácticamente nos dice que él ya hacía este trabajo, pero allá en las fronteras. Con lo que hacía es mi amigo. México, en Chihuahua. Pasaba gente y estaba de coyote, pero por aquí uno no puede estar hablando tanto de eso porque es mucho amado. Entonces, lo relativo a eso es que nosotros ahora tratamos de ayudarle mucho a los inmigrantes porque la corrupción que hay en Panamá de parte del gobierno allá roba mucho a la gente cuando la gente no aporta tanto dinero. Pero ¿qué pasa? Que nosotros estamos ahora apoyando a esa gente para que no lo roben tanto y no haya tanto de narcotráfico, ese control de, de gente que está aquí. Eso es, empieza desde Necoclí. Y se mete el policía para que ayuden a la gente a apoyarlo en todo eso. Aquí en Campo Urgana, eso es falso. Mucho más. Pasabas gente desde Culiacán hasta Chihuahua y por Chihuahua. Querétaro. Querétaro. Cogía desde Querétaro y Chihuahua. Ese era un, en camión? Eso, en camionetas privadas. Porque ya hoy en día hay que saberlo ocultar. Porque ya la gente no se deja ver tanto de mucha gente. Lleva mucha cámara, mucho infiltrado. Entonces... Yo lo que te puedo decir es eso. ¿Cuánto cobraban? Para... Cobraba de México allá por persona 2.500 dólares. ¿Usaban? Vine porque hubo mucha matanza y me tocó venirme a Colombia. ¿Tú qué eres? Yo era, trabajaba de coyote. Allá. ¿Pero, qué, ¿Pero qué entidad eres? ¿De dónde eres? Yo soy aquí de Colombia. ¿Eres de Colombia? Tengo nacionalidades panameña y colombiana. Y residencia en Medellín. Y me vine acá porque acá tengo parte de mi familia también. En Panamá, muchas gracias. mucha familia también. Pues muchas gracias, Nos Díaz. Yo creo que ya te agradezco con okay. todo eso lo que me dijiste. Te agradezco mucho. Okay. Muchas gracias.